Good morning. Whoops. Let me turn my mic on. There we go. Is that better? Yes, it is. <laughs> Good morning and welcome once again to Faith at Home with Pastor Carla. Um, this is one of those days where it's a good thing we're online. I'm looking at a beautiful snowfall out our windows. Um, don't know how much we'll get, but it looks pretty right now. Anyway, as we have started to uh, start our worship services, I hope you have your Christ candle ready. And let us light our Christ candles together to remind ourselves, as always, that no matter where we are, Christ's Spirit is with us. He unites us. And this day, we worship him together. Uh, as for our announcements today, for the Walnut Valley folks, please be looking in your email accounts um, later on today or tomorrow morning. I'll be sending out. I have a few dates. We have to have that special church conference. And I was given several dates to do this. It will be via Zoom. So uh, please look and get back to me as soon as you can as to what date is good for you. And this way we can have our church conference, uh, special church conference. It'll be a very brief one this time. Uh, other than that, we start the new year. Happy New Year. Let us begin our worship together. Uh, we will sing three verses of the first Noel.
please join me now in focusing our worship. Quietly, the new year slips in. Holy God, in this new year, we seek you as we have always sought you. We need you as we have always needed you. We hunger for your presence, your peace, your justice, and your love. Open our hearts afresh and anew. Open our minds that we may know you. Open our hands that we may care for you. Open our ears and eyes that we may hear and see you in our neighbor, in the foreigner, in the refugee, even in our enemy, and perhaps especially in ourselves. That we may know in the deepest part of ourselves that you call us and that we are capable of seeing and naming, doing and being your love, your peace, your hope, and your justice in your world. Bless us now and always, in Christ's name. Amen. This is the time in our worship where we raise before God and one another our cares, our concerns, our joys, anything we would like lifted in prayer. And so, as always, I will start the prayer and um, leave time for you to lift up whom you would like, bring us back together, and end with the Lord's Prayer. So please, let us pray. Eternal God, gracious God, loving God, we have celebrated a New Year's Day, but for you, time is time and rolls on. No day is more different than the other, and you are with us through all of them, and we are blessed by your presence, by your spirit, by your, by your grace, by your wisdom, by all that you give us, Lord, each and every day. And Lord, as we come to worship you today, we are just here to give our thanks, to give our praise, and to open ourselves to you and offer ourselves to you and ask for your blessing and ask for your wisdom and your guidance and all that you give. But mostly, Lord, just to celebrate that we are your children and you are our God. And through this, we know life is beautiful and life is blessed. So thank you this day, Lord, for the beauty, for the snow that is falling, for the joy that has happened, and for um, the people that we are with. But Lord, as we gather, we also gather with cares and concerns on our hearts, and we place them on your altar at this time. Lord, for those who have been named who need your healing touch, we ask you as our great physician to bring that healing about, working through the doctors, through the nurses, or just through your spirit, Lord. And always help these people to grow stronger, to grow healthy, to, to become whole once again, return them to fullness and wholeness of health. If there are people who are grieving, Lord, whose names have been lifted, we pray for them as well, asking that your spirit bring them comfort, bring them peace, um, bring them what they need through this challenging time. And Lord, for all the joys in life that have happened, um, we just thank you for celebrating with us. Um, we just give you thanks that you share all of life with us and walk with us each and every day. And as always, Lord, we pray for this world where there is war, let there be peace. Where there's oppression, let there be freedom. Where there's hunger, may they be fed. Where there's illness, may there be healing. Through us, through others, may this world come to know the peace and the kingdom you have promised. Through Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
One announcement I forgot to make before I start with the readings, and that is, if you haven't noticed, today is Communion Sunday. So I'm hoping if you plan on celebrating Communion today, um, that you have your Communion elements with you. If not, take some time during the reading or during the sermon um, to get your, whatever you're using, bread and juice, um, crackers and, and, and water, or any other fruit of the vine you might like, um, to have it ready for communion, time for Communion. So our first reading is from Ecclesiastes 3. And this is that famous passage that goes, There is a time for everything, a season for every activity under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather them, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to search and a time to give up, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to mend, a time to be silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. What do workers gain from their toil? I have seen the burden God has laid on human race. He has made everything beautiful in its time. He has also set eternity in the human heart, yet no one can fathom what God has done from beginning to end. I know that there is nothing better for people than to be happy and to do good while they are alive, that each of them may eat and drink and find satisfaction in all their toil. This 
is a gift of God. And our gospel reading today comes from the second chapter of Matthew. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who was born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all of Jerusalem with him. When they had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, they said, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. They opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, if you're anything like me, when you hear that passage from Ecclesiastes, a song probably starts playing in your head. And that's because the song Turn, Turn, Turn by the Birds back in 1965 was based off of this Bible passage. It's a timeless song because it's a timeless passage. This passage has as much to say to us today as it did several thousands of years ago. Uh, I didn't look up the time when Ecclesiastes was written, but it is Old Testament, so that means it's pre-Jesus. So it's well over 2,000 years ago. So it's a very appropriate reading. Uh, this usually comes in a watch night service. Now, Methodist denomination doesn't do, most churches don't do a watch night service, but um, I know several denominations that do. And a watch night service would be typically done New Year's Eve, um, right close to midnight, say 11 o'clock, hoping to end at midnight, so you welcome in the new year in prayer and praise to God. So that's where this reading came from for today. And I thought how appropriate considering the past year we have had, the year that for some is the year that shall not be named because we've gone through so much. But if we look at this passage and what it says to us, to, to every generation, the basic thing is for every positive, there is going to be a negative. But also, it also says for every negative, there is a positive. And if we can think about what this passage, the things it named, which was important in their generation and their year. Um, for every time a baby is born, you know sooner or later that person will pass. Uh, but if you're a gardener, you know when you plant those seeds that hopefully in a few months you're going to be able to reap a harvest. And if you've ever lost a loved one, you know there is a time to cry and a time to mourn. But hopefully, eventually, you get to the time where you can laugh and you can dance and celebrate the memories of that last of that loved one that has passed um, and remember the good times and move on in life and enjoy the memories. This passage teaches that there's an appropriate time for everything under heaven. And so even if 2020 was arguably probably one of the worst years in most of our lifetimes. There has to be a reason or a lesson or a purpose for it, according to this passage. So instead of dwelling on the negative, let's look for the positive of what has passed and what we have gotten from 2020. I'm hoping that most of you, if not all of you, got to watch at least a little bit of uh, NBC's 
show that was called Escaping 2020. It aired on Thursday night. Uh, I think it was a two hour show from eight to 10 o'clock. We caught the, just the last 45 minutes of it, not knowing what it was going to be about. And oh my gosh, I wish I had watched the entire thing. Yes, it talked about, it showed the challenges that we faced in 2020, but more importantly, it showed the creative and awesome ways that people found to get around those challenges. It showed how people, you know, so we couldn't visit in person, especially in care facilities and nursing homes, how they would bring a chair and with a phone and, and, and by a window, got, still got to visit their loved ones. It showed how people, you know, one couple had a new baby and they had to go show grandpa. And again, brought him to his window in his, in his room and how thrilled he was to see his grandbaby. People still got married, masks and all. In fact, a lot of them made fun with it. And you know, and the, I saw a lot of masks that said mother of the bride or father of the bride, mother of the groom, bridesmaids, all those kinds. Of, they made creative fun ways to make it a celebration of love at those times in the middle of a pandemic. People still got engaged. Uh, there was two EMTs, <laughs> I think I was close to Christmas, one got down on his knee and, went and proposed to the other, going, we've been through to hell and back. Let's, let's go through life together, too. And they were engaged. Uh, how many people this, you know, this time last year had no clue what Zoom was? And now you're as comfortable as, as, as you know, talking on the phone with using Zoom to communicate and see people and, and, and be with people. Yes. There was a lot of negatives, but more than that, there were so many positives that we can focus on and are important to focus on because there will never be a good reason, a good enough reason to, uh, to the question of why did this pandemic have to hit our world? Why did 1.7 plus million people have to pass? There will never be a good enough reason for that. But if we look at this passage and understand that for everything there is a season. A, this too shall pass. It's, that's not a, a boost of um, optimism. I don't know what is. But in verse 11, now I read from the NIV translation, the New International Version, which is a Christian Bible. And in every Christian Bible, verse 11 has in it, it says, God has made everything beautiful in its time. And yes, that's pretty and that's poetic, but I was never really sure what to do with that. And then I read that same verse in the Jewish Tanakh, the scripture they use, and how they translate that verse. It says, God brings everything to pass precisely at its time. Which says, we have lessons to learn. For some reason, we had to go through this. And what I'm hoping is that the knowledge we have gained, we as a society, I'm, I'm looking at the scientists, the doctors, the nurses, and everyone involved has learned so much throughout this year that when the next time comes, and there will be a next time, biologists tell us that this happens almost once every 100 years where a gene will mutate. I mean, the last big virus was the Spanish flu of 1918. And if you watch the documentary on that, it is scary on how similar it is to today. Um, hopefully what we have learned this time can help make a, a better plan for next time and future generations will learn from this. But in the meantime, for us common folks, for us, us, us simple, simpler folks who aren't in the front lines, um, what do we do? And for that, I would suggest we focus on verse 9 from this passage, which asks the question, what do workers gain from their toil? And this is a, such a good question to ask ourselves. What have we gained? What do we gain from this past year? And again, I would go back to that show, <laughs> Escaping 2020, as crazy as this sounds. It gave several good answers to that question. Um, of what did we learn, what did we gain. I love, there were a couple videos. One had two little, uh, I think they were around three years old, two little preschool, they must have been preschool buddies. 
Now, I don't know if this was pre-planned or did they just happen to be on the same sidewalk at the same time, but when they saw each other, oh my gosh, one's like, William, and they just ran toward each other and almost bowled each other over and just hugged and how they missed each other. There was another video of two older kids. I put them around 10 or 11, they're cousins who hadn't seen each other in so long. And they did stop and ask for permission. Could they hug? And their parents said, of course. And they just hugged the stuffings out of each other. Um, it was just such a neat thing to see, a heartwarming thing to see. Uh, I think parents gained a much greater appreciation and deeper understanding of what teachers have to do and go through on a daily basis. If you get to see, there was one video, it was a mom, she's in her bathroom and her, it looked like a shower cap and she's praying and they only show part of it and the part they show, the, 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 she starts off with, Lord, I know I am a child of God. What I am not is a homeschool teacher. And she just went on about how, Lord, the, the spirit of the common core has entered our house. Lord, please get the spirit of the carry the one over in here to chase it away. Oh, Lord, help us. I mean, she made light of it, but she came to realize how the struggle is that teachers have. And that's another thing. People's creativity blossomed this past year to get us through these times because laughter is, best, is the best medicine to get through these times. What did the last year teach you? What did you learn in experiencing this past year? I've heard a number of people say how they've come to realize that a slower pace in life is a good thing. That you know, not, not panicking and being extra busy 24-7, you know, 365. And they truly enjoyed it. I think we've all learned the importance of simple things like hugs and handshakes and just the basic power of human touch. Um, now, if you've been blessed to have loved ones with you, to have people in your bubble, as we now say, and you've been able to hug one another and, and um, you know, just talk to one another and, and be with one another, and you might be looking at this saying, well, maybe not so much, you know, the human contact. You might be ready to wring their neck at times. But know how blessed you are. Because the people I've spoken to who have gone through this, who are by themselves, for whatever reason, it has been so challenging and so difficult. And they can't wait for just the simple thing of gathering with others and being together. Truly having people in your bubble is a huge blessing through all of this. Um, I know grandparents who've had new grandbabies this year and they haven't been able to see them or hug them or touch them. Think about what it's going to be like when that does happen and the joy that that will bring. To me, one of the best things to do is to look on years like this and learn from it. If you learn from it, it's never as bad as it has been. In fact, it makes it so much better. Um, I'm hoping that our struggles that we have been through this year help future generations. Because like I said, this will happen again down the road. And maybe when that happens, they will look back and say, well, you know, they did this and it didn't work out so well. Let's do something differently. And maybe so many people would not have had to pass. Maybe the isolation time wouldn't have to be so long. But, you know, maybe they won't have to go through what we've gone through. And that, in a way, will be a our, our struggle will be their blessing. And this brings me to the last, and it connects, believe it or not, to Matthew's passage of the Magi, which I assume you all have heard and know the story of you know, the wise men coming to bring Jesus their gifts. But did you ever pay attention to that final verse in that passage, which says, and having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. We can look at this past year as a lesson. I prefer to use the word lesson, not warning. Um, and look forward to that future. Because vaccines have started. 
all over the world, vaccines have started, so that light at the end of the tunnel is getting brighter. And it's a hope for normalcy that we will hopefully see, by, I'm hoping by mid-year, that we can be back to normal. Let us learn from this past year. And when we return to our country, when we return to being in public in a normal, may we remember our lessons that personal relationships are far more important than busy work schedules, that caring for others and finding ways of connecting with them is far more important than just saying, eh, that we can help make someone's life a little bit better and include one another in this world. And when we do that, all we're doing is making God's kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. And that is our prayer. This day, every day, every Sunday. Let us begin this new year with the hope and the promise that is yet to come. Thanks be to God. Amen. As we move into our time of Holy Communion, once again, as always, I extend Christ's invitation. This is his table. He is our host. We are his guests. 
and all are welcome to this table. Typically, I have a prayer of confession at this point, but since it is the first Sunday of the new year, I felt it would be better to pray for the new year. So if you would please join me. O oh, star-flinging God, whose light dances across eternity, dazzle us into your presence this new year. Open our hearts to the mystery of your love. Awaken us to your presence, knit into the ordinary. Reveal to us what is possible, but not present. Heal us that we might be healers. Reconcile us to you and to ourselves that our living might be reconciling. Stop us often, we pray, with news that is good, with hope that holds, with truth that transforms, with a word tailored to this trail we're on. May the word of your grace guide our steps, like the sun by day and the north star by night, as we travel into the gift of a new year. Amen. Please join me now in praying the great thanksgiving. We give you thanks, O God, for making your love evident since the very beginning of time when you spoke the word which replaced the darkness of chaos with life-giving light, a light which has nurtured generations of people and plants and creatures, great and small, a light which also revealed the fear and the powerlessness caused by corrupt and evil actions. And so you spoke the word which once and for all dispelled the darkness of chaotic lives. Through your love for the world, the word became flesh and lived among us, full of grace and truth. The angels caroled glory to you in the highest and peace to all people on earth. And we join them and with all people we praise your holy name. Holy Lord, God of endless love, heaven and earth are surely full of your glory. The angels sang of it, we have been lavished with it. Blessed is he who was born that we might have life. Glory to God, and on earth, peace to all people. Holy God, as the travelers with their treasures were overwhelmed with joy on finding Jesus, so also are we overwhelmed on finding out the depth of his love for us. For Jesus showed us how beloved we are to him by loving us and giving himself for us. On that night when he gave himself for us, he sat at a table, he broke bread, and he said to his friends, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Remember me each time you do this. After they had eaten, he took the cup and again said, Remember me as you drink from this. This is the cup of your salvation, the beginning of a new relationship with God. Send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts of bread and wine, O God, that we may experience the presence of the Word made flesh, Jesus Christ. Breathe your Spirit into us, that we may become one body with him living at his ministry in the world today and every day. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Now as you take your bread, remember that this is the body of Christ, our bread of life. And again, as you take the cup, Remember, this is the cup of our salvation. Thanks be to God. Amen. We end, our, <laughs> we end our service with singing We Three Kings, three verses.
westward leading, still proceeding. Christ guides us still this day. And as we go into this new year by another route, let us remember that we are called to build the kingdom and that we are we have been blessed and we continue to be blessed and be a blessing in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you.